throughout the nation and around the globe. From his heart to yours, it's Dear James Live, bringing you intuitive insight, answers, and advice to your life questions. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Weekly Wisdom and Insights, where we receive spiritually guided transformation and empowerment from the unseen. I am your host, Dear James, and I am so excited to be back with you after uh, a couple of weeks hiatus um, due to personal reasons, and as you can probably tell with my voice, um, about uh, with a virus. But anyways, we are back, we are live, and I couldn't be more happy uh, to be here with all of you. So as, as you know, throughout the broadcast, we take your questions live and we incorporate your comments. So as you're joining us, tell us in the comments where you're joining from and say hello so that we know you're there. And we will continue through with the show. And there are some really beautiful, auspicious energies um, for this month. We're in the month of December. And I just want to go back quickly to the month of November. I'm just going to bring this up quickly on the screen. And remember that the November 2022 energies were about peace and enthusiasm and how they were, in essence, pressing in on eradicating conflict because 2022 is a six year and it's about conflict and destiny. And so that's been the overarching theme as we have progressed through 2022. Well, we're coming into and we're in December and it's this beautiful month. It's a 12 and it's this beautiful month um, that equates to utopia. And I just want to bring this up. I'm going to bring it up on the screen here. And utopia is an imagined place or state of things in which everything is perfect. And so keep this in mind, this, this key word, this month of, of December in the 12th, this key word of utopia, an imagined place or state of things in which everything is perfect. Now, it's an imagined state or place. And so it's a mental construct. It is something that we are going to embody, that we're going to see. As the world stage plays out, that may be or look imperfect. But the number 12, it's an auspicious number. And it has to do with utopia, with this perfected state. And it's interesting too, because as we come the month of December, and there's some there's some really beautiful, it's the month of Advent. And Advent comes from the Latin, meaning Adventus, and it means the coming or arrival. It's from the Greek Perusia. And so, and the Advent in, from Christ, from a standpoint of Christianity, the Advent is also it's associated with the second coming of Christ and so forth. So we're, December is this month of Advent, this Adventus, this coming, this arrival. And so there's really two energies playing. We have this auspiciousness, the utopia aspect. And then what's very interesting when you look at the numbers, 12, 7, 2022. 12 on its own, the hexagram 12 is about standstill. And you're going to see how the standstill, Advent, and how annually the sun, S-U-N, the sun, dies and is reborn. It's the death of the old sun. So in the annual calendar, right from 1221 slash 22, it's right at midnight, to 1224, 25 midnight, literally the sun, S-U-N, the star of our galaxy, of our being, everything that we derive life from, nourishment from, it literally dies, meaning there's this period from 1221 to 1224, midnight to midnight, where the length of the, the sun no longer falls farther south. So it's no longer declining. It goes into almost an, an intermediate space or place. And then come 1225, Christmas Day, 1225, 
the celebration literally of the birth of Christ, of Master Jesus, the son is reborn. There was the three days, right? The crucifixion, three days. He arose after the third day. All of this is tied together. And so these energies of, of the end of the year, of December, all of this is culminating in these two numbers, 12, standstill, and then 19, because the 12 and 7 become a 19, which is approach. And that approach is, remember, this coming. This So you can see the correlation, this coming, this arrival of the new. You can see this arrival of the ideal is the, is the new reality. So you see where these are all taking place. And I'm just going to read for you. I'm going to see if I can bring it up on my screen for you. And we'll do it this way. Um, and this is from, um, I'll, I'll put the, the website on for you. but. Um, in essence, it talks about, it's Sol Invictus, the unconquered sun. And it talks about the sun will die at midnight on December 21st, but don't panic. It will rebirth on midnight, December 24th. This occurs at the beginning of winter every year for the past 4.6 billion years. It is called the winter solstice. That's on 1221, the winter solstice. Sun stood still. And it's considered the shortest day in the year in terms of hours of sunlight. It's a three-day period when the hours of daylight are at its shortest and the hours of night, darkness, are at their longest. Noticeably, the sun progressively sets earlier each evening after June 22nd. That's the summer solstice. It's the longest hours of sunlight. And nightfall comes to the earliest on December 21st. So, and then I want you to see, so way back, worshiping the sun, and they said, so our ancestors did just that more than 9,000 years ago, and it is still being done today. The ancients selected December 21st, the winter solstice, as the ideal time to invoke the sun. Maybe if you were living in the North Pole and had long, dark, harsh winters to deal with, you might want to invoke the sun too, obviously, because the days were so short. In the solar myth, the death of the old sun occurs at the length of daylight as the length of daylight decreases and becomes its lowest at the winter solstice, which begins on midnight of December 21st, early morning on the 22nd, and ends midnight December 24th, early morning December 25th. The sun stops moving south on December 22nd. It is then at its lowest point in the northern hemisphere, residing in this vicinity of the Southern Cross. It stays at its lowest point for three days, December 22nd, 23rd, 24th, appearing to not move further south or north and was considered dead. It returned to life at midnight on December 24th, early morning 25th, when it begins its northern journey again and the hours of sunlight start to lengthen. So the reason that the unseen is bringing this up for us and the reason that this is important is because it, it culminates, it ties so many pieces together. The end of the year, the, the, uh, the death of the sun and its rebirth. This standstill, 12, standstill, and this approach, 19, this approach where the new, the new life begins. And so, and all tied up in this, is this extra piece that's that's coming to me this year about utopia, about all that they've been talking about, which is that the ideal, the ideal becomes the new reality. And so we are literally in this, um, as they said, this a moment of truth, of reflection. So it's very, very important for you to hold this vision, to embody this, this energy, this moment. It's, it's literally 909. There's light workers and, and source right there affirming, hold this vision of utopia. Hold this vision of the ideal is the new reality. Because as the old, quote unquote, the old sun dies, the new sun arises the new day, the new energy. 
out with the old, in with the new, Piscean era out, Aquarian era in. It's a return of a golden age. And it and that golden age is literally utopia. I'm just bringing it back up again. An imagined place or state of things in which everything is perfect. And perfect meaning harmonious, balanced, good, kind, nourished. There you you we we complement and collaborate. We don't compete. And it's not to say that you don't, and that what's yours is yours. You don't need to compete for it. You never had to. We never had to do that. That's a mental construct that says, oh, I have to take this from you so that I can have it. But in this, in this energy, in this dynamic, where all of this energy is leading, we go to the new, which is, which is the original, which is, it's the, it's the horn of plenty. It's the cornucopia. It's what's ours is ours. It's, it's already meant to be. And thereby, we need not take it from another. We need not compete for it. We simply show up. We, we present our, our authentic natural selves. And through, remember, through peace and enthusiasm, these are the November energies, through peace and enthusiasm, conflict is eradicated. It, it goes away. It disappears. It's gone because we're operating from a place of peace and enthusiasm. So this is where we start with everything. So let me go to because the, there's two main energies here. So I want to tell you the, the main energies for this month and then the supporting energies. So on the screen, the two main energies, stand still and approach. And then we have four supporting energies. We have seven, and we have double sevens, by the way, because the day is seven, and then 12-7-2022 becomes a seven. And remember, seven represents completion or divine fulfillment. It's the fullness and completeness, the perfection. We're talking about a perfected state or place, and that it is the foundation, that number seven is also the foundation of God's word. So however you, highest, highest being, however you associate with that, it's the foundation of it. It's the promise. It's the fulfillment. So that's seven. We have 10, of course, new beginnings. And 10 is about treading. It's cautious advance. It means that we're, and seven also means, remember, it's legions and army. And it's about correct discipline. So it's about us being harmonic. We are not out of sync. We are not inauthentic. We are absolutely in sync, authentic, we are, we are um, collaborating, we're in a state of peace, enthusiasm, cooperation, all of these things, not competition. And thus it's correct discipline, it's knowing how to act, when to act, these types of things. It's about being mindful with our words, our actions, um, our content, what we put out, what we say, what we convey, what is our energy, what is the company we keep these types of things. 10 is about treading. So it's cautious advance. It's, it's minding our steps. 16, enthusiasm. It's to excite. And it's to excite ourselves. It's to push past well beyond where we ever thought we would be, where we ever thought we could go. Because in this standstill time, and you'll see how these connect, in the standstill time, there is the awareness, right? There's the conscious awareness. So it's both the standstill because it's it's like um, it's like the train coming in, the, the train's coming into the station, and a new one is then, and you you switch platforms, and a new one embarks. And so there's this excitement. There's this transition. There's this. I have the golden ticket. I already have my ticket. And then, of course, the last one, which is so beautiful, is 25, innocence. It's to operate from, an, from a place of innocence. And innocence is to be open. It's to be kind. It's to be, it's, it's all knowing. It's to know these as truths. It's to operate from this place as a place of truth. And when we're faced with someone that may challenge us or, you know, we, we come into that that's not in this state of being, it's still to remember with grace and humility 
that that's exactly where we are. We choose to be that. We choose to reflect that. We choose to embody that. We choose to emit that. So here's all of this, this excitement, this innocence, this enthusiasm, this cooperation, collaboration, this goodness, this offering, this auspicious energy, this utopia. And it becomes the new reality. So I just want to bring in uh, Ann, hello, and Ann, hello. Thank you. Welcome for uh, joining us. And again, please put in the comments that where you're joining from and that you are there. And please let me know how this is resonating with you. Um, it was a very interesting period for, to be off these last two weeks of November. And it was, it was literally, um, when I say forced, meaning um, it, of course, was by choice, by necessity and choice. But there was almost like a force, like a higher hand saying, slow down. You need you need to rest. You need to you're going to come into this. And remember, it's like the train coming in. It's it's slowing into the station. It stops. You you transfer. You know you you change platforms, and you get on the new train. And the new train embarks in a whole new way, a whole new world, a whole new direction. And so it was a very interesting thing of this latter November energies of rest. And, and in a certain way, and so let me know how that may be affecting all of you. Have you had a sense where you've been, quote unquote, forced to rest or slow down? Um, and yet there's still an excitement. There's still a, a genuine enthusiasm to get moving and get going. Um, and yet, so you can see these dueling energies, these two main energies, stand still and approach. It's like holding in place. And the the anticipation, the excitement of the approach, the 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 taking off, and how that um, and how again Advent, this coming, this arrival, and then how the death of the old sun, the old dies, the new sun is reborn, is birthed, and I'm going to bring up here. Remember, enthusiasm opens many doors. So where there is a key here, 16, enthusiasm, it's to, it's to excite. And any obstruction, it's about innovate. So it's about being innovative and how small restraint and, and surrender. So these are the, the hidden influences. These are the underlining causes of 16, enthusiasm. Enthusiasm opens many doors. So when you're met with obstruction, innovate. Small restraint, meaning surrender. Open yourself to the way. That way, it, it builds upon itself. It's contagious. Enthusiasm, just like this virus, is highly, uh, as they said, highly, uh, uh, highly contagious and aggressive. Well, in the most auspicious, beautiful way, enthusiasm is highly contagious and auspicious in the most positive, beautiful way. And so it is a key energy at this time to keep your enthusiasm up. Um, as we move into, and today, by the way, today is the Gemini full moon. It's called the cold moon because, of course, it's the, it, it, it ushers in winter, um, which is the cold. Um, but it's also Gemini. It's the twins. It's air. And so again, there's a reinforcing element here about these two main energies, stand still and approach. That there's this duality, if you will, and yet they're complementative. They, they complement one another. And so let me go to, um, I want to go to Hexagram. And hello, Alicia from Los Angeles, and thank you very much for the well wishes. I want to go to Hexagram. 12 because it is about standstill and its action is release so here we, we're going to be released from the old energies we're going to be released again the sun the death of the old sun the rebirth this standstill from 12 midnight 1221 to midnight 1224 these three days it's 
So its action is to release, its hidden influence is development, it's to permeate. And remember, we talked about this divine feminine energy. It's not to be held, it's not to be encapsulated, it's not genie in the bottle. It's about permeating, allow, embodying it, permeating it, allowing it to flow through us. And its underlining cause is what? Peace. It's like, and, and to relax, to, to exhale, to come into a state of authenticity, of being, literally a state of being. We're no longer in conflict. We're going to be integrated, harmonious, integrated, all, all in one. Head, heart, soul, mind, all of it is operating as one. And thereby, because when, when they're not, it's, that's when we're in conflict, right? So when we're in harmonic resonance with all of those things, when they're integrated, then we're in collaboration and cooperation internally, personally, which then automatically flows out. So, and in, so hexagram um, 12, standstill, talks about our desire for the familiar and to know peace can often lead us away from further growth. Therefore, after a time of peace as the underlining cause, a situation can lead to stagnation or standstill. So here, what's interesting is we're moving to peace. I mean, it's always been there, but we're moving to it. And thus, we can, out of familiarity, out of contentment, out of uh, unconsciousness, out of these things, we can lead ourselves astray when we're meant to move forward, we're meant to grow. And so um, it says you are asked to release something so that development can proceed. The purpose of receiving this hexagram is to remind you that all of life changes and moves toward growth. So remember the sun, the old sun is dying because we're moving, because it's moving towards growth, it's renewal. It's rebirth. It's the same for us. We're being asked to let go of the old so that we can develop and proceed and move towards growth. Humans cannot remain on the sidelines. It can be frustrating to throw your enthusiasm against the course of events that seem to have placed you in a holding pattern. Patience is how you release your sense of urgency and allow the outcome to unfold. So, this is to remember. Divine time, not our time, divine time, divine time. So maintain enthusiasm, maintain patience. It's in your knowing. This is what they're talking about. It's in our knowing that this is the new reality and thereby don't allow, you know, just because it hasn't happened like this yesterday, don't allow that to, um, frustrate you, or diminish your enthusiasm. Hold it. Maintain it. Remember, an imagined place or state of things in which everything is perfect. Keep holding on to that utopia state of being. Uh, the hidden influence allows for the development of a new awareness, skills, or ways of interacting with the world. We're going to be open. We're going to be receptive. We're going to be patient and receiving. Um, in order to learn how to be steadfast, one must relinquish expectation, assumptions, and impatience. Woo! Relinquish expectation, assumptions, and, and impatience. Those are big things because we are, especially look at, you know, it's a 24-7 news cycle. It's instantaneous. Things go viral. You know, we're, we're accustomed to, we want it now. It will come, divine time, it comes. So release the how, the shoulds, the woulds, the, the disappointments, the impatience, any assumptions. Just as winter appears as a time when the world appears lifeless, there is much going on in your underground world. 10,000 seeds are becoming the landscape of your spring. When you feel frustrated, take a walk in the woods. You'll be amazed at the realizations you will have when you are away from your phone and computer. In fact, if you were to have a conversation with trees and bushes, they might ask, 
Why do you walk in circles when life plants you exactly where you need to be? See, we're always being shown. We, we always know. We have a knowing. And so follow the knowing. It's your soul source connection. It is your true north. It is your soul source GPS guidance system. It knows. It knows when to act. It knows when to wait. It knows when to run forth, le- quantum leap of faith. It knows when to hold back long enough to see what plays out. And thus, assumptions and expectations and impatience aren't part of the equation. You've moved beyond them. You're in a state of stillness, peace, enthusiasm. Nature is the greatest teacher of how to be steadfast and move in time with the changing cycles. Discover the contentment of following life on its terms, the way not our way, the way. Follow the great circle and allow standstill to unleash an innovative approach within you. And this is really about an awakening because again, the sun, the death of the old sun dies, the new is reborn. Think of that in terms of the snake shedding its skin. Think of this for yourselves, for ourselves. Think of it in this way. This is a moment where we can shed that old skin, all of these old thoughts, behaviors, actions, inactions, all of these things, just lay them down. Because this month is, and one of the first things they said is, it's a transition, It's tr- we're transitioning. And they said transitioning, leveling up. And then they gave me, and I'm going to bring this up because I just love this image. Here we are. And look at this beautiful image. And remember, it's it's from the movie Up. It's a Disney Pixar movie. Um, and it's about the fact that as a younger child, he had a dream about exploring South America to find the forbidden Paradise Falls. And then as an elderly gentleman... He collects all of these balloons and uproots his home. He uproots himself to to go on this adventure to find Utopia, Paradise Falls. And remember, so they're telling us it's a transitioning. It's a leveling up. We are literally going from 12 to 13. We're going from 22 to 23. Think about how the number 13. The number 13 represents, it's the letter M like Mary. It represents the divine feminine. It is, and look at all of the things, uh, 12 apostles plus Master Jesus, 13. Knights of the Round Table, 12 knights plus, um, as I forget, uh, King Arthur, 13, 13, 13. This, um, as the way I'm hearing it, this master number from 2022, from 22 to 23, this auspiciousness about up leveling. And look at one and three becomes a four, it's foundational. Two and three becomes a five, it's about change. And so we are up leveling and They also brought to my attention that in the movie Up, the antagonist is this main character's childhood idol. So be be ready and be prepared for facing people and their fears them not wanting you to move forward, them not wanting to let you go. Them playing their divine role perfectly for you so that you then make in this, in this energy, in this auspicious, auspicious energy of standstill and approach, you make your divine choices. You choose. They're just playing their role, but there's always an antagonist, right? There's always an antagonist. There, there will be 
imagining for this main character the disappointment that his childhood idol is actually trying to prevent him from getting to Paradise Falls. So these characters, these people that are playing roles in our lives that we may be presented with where they don't want us to move forward, to move on, to become something new, something greater, to level up, to transition. However, that's where your will, your, your divine will, your divine sovereignty, your divine choices come into play. So know that they may be, you know, you may be presented with them and allow that to um, be the impetus, be the, um, the raison d'etre, the, the acceleration, the reason for you to choose the new you. Let me bring in Ann's comment. She's saying, so yes, this totally resonates with me. I call it irony and common sense from the body too. I was very excited and ready to start a new project and my body just said no. I was very ill and even ended up in the emergency room. I had to stop. Respect the, juxt the juxtaposition of the energetic abundance with the time down requirement. Exactly. Here are these two because we're leveling up. So they're bringing, they're slowing us down so as to be leveled up. It was a bit frustrating until I just decided to let go of that and allow the flow to happen. It all worked out great in the end, but I have also had these opposite twin energies at play. And they're very, it's very interesting there. It's, it's hard for us to slow down, and yet it is so purposeful. Everything is purposeful. And so... The slowing down allows us to heal. It allows us to, they're saying, to recover. And to recover meaning to receive. So it's to recover, to heal, but to recover as in to receive. Because if we're going too fast, we can't change platforms. We can't change trains. We've got we to make the, the, the disembarkation and the embarkation. We've got we to gotta switch platforms and trains. Um, Ann is continuing. She said, also, would like... Uh, to say that when you truly align with source and ask for abundance, tell the universe that you are ready. Hold on, hold on to your hat. It hits hard, and you have to say thank you. Keep it coming because I can handle it. Yes, there's the openness, there's the enthusiasm, there is the asking and the receiving. This is all about, and here we are, the full moon, this advent, this coming, this arrival, this. It's already yours. That is the beautiful thing. Stay out of the mindset of competing, out of competition, out of lack. Banish it from your, from your being. Connect with soul source. Connect with the limitless abundance of the universe. And know, because there's only one you. There's only one of each of us. There is only one of your energy, of your divine brilliance, of your divineness. And so there are, I don't know, I'm making up a number. There are a million clairvoyant psychics, intuitives. There is only one dear James. And that's, I just listen and I, and I, offer and we and we do what they guide. I don't need to worry about what everybody else is doing. And that is the same for each and every one of us as an individual. We came in whole and complete with all of this divine auspiciousness. There's only one of us. We are divinely unique. So stay in a state of cooperation, collaboration, peace, enthusiasm, excitement, openness, Ask so as to receive. Because again, the second thing, a moment of truth, a moment of reflection. And what was just said, you'll reflect on, is this my truth? Is this my reflection? Should it be so, go forth and conquer in that way and watch how doors open up. It doesn't mean there won't be an antagonist. But the antagonist is there and, you know, it's the universe's way of, of saying, okay, 
well, you, you say you want this, and you say you're open, and you say you're going to be this way. Are you? And you continue on that way so that you can see. Because again, sometimes we may think that we're going this way, and that we think that this is ours, but we get, we get you know, they, they, they uh, kind of buffer us over. You know, it's like the train, they're, they're showing me the train tracks and the signal change. And instead of going straight forward, the, the train veers off slightly to the right because it's meant to take you somewhere else. Had you just gone forward, it would have been a dead end. And so it stand back when you, when you receive the antagonists, when you're, you know, faced with them. Stand back long enough to see, hands off the wheel, ah, why is this occurring? Why am I being guided to go a different direction? Of course, in hindsight, you'll know, because then you'll see, because otherwise, if you keep pushing forward, well, you're going to have that experience, that confrontation experience, that conflict. You don't need to do that. So... Um, and remember this beautiful because we're we're exceeding right here's that beautiful tendon look at the the symmetry of this image that we had from a month month two months ago of this exceeding the big tent and the uh, the hot air balloons to this most recent example of up and look at the you know all of the balloons comprising the hot air balloon and that we are transitioning we're leveling up um let me bring you back to this other piece, which I want to talk about hexagram 19 very quickly. Um, and so let me go to that. And so hexagram 19 is about advance. So it's the approach, and it's about advancing. And its hidden influence is return, go back. So remember, we're going back to where we began, but an octave higher, 12 to 13, 22 to 23. And we return, we return to ourselves. Look how the sun, the, the death of the old sun, it returns to itself. It's in a standstill. It returns to itself, and then it's reborn. And then the underlining cause is 33, retreat, disengage. Well, there's the, you know, you're getting pulled out of the game. You're being slowed down. It's like, it's a momentary thing. It's not forever. It's just this momentary retreat, disengage, because we got to switch platforms. And it says, when you place yourself in a position to help another, you will discover your greater capabilities. So this is, again, remember, this is reinforcing your divine authenticity. When you it's as if when we do what we are authentically, when we do what is authentically ours, it automatically is a form of service to self and others. Because it's not in conflict. It's not in competition. It's not based in lack. It's not taking something from another. It's already ours. It's authentic. It's divine. When we naturally bring it up and out, when we are the, we are the custodians remember we are the custodians of these things we're the custodian of the experiences so when we bring that authentic experience that talent that trait that gift that offering up and out and we are the custodian of it it naturally serves because we're naturally in service with it to it and it talks about in creating the only hard thing is to begin. A grass blades no easier to make than an oak. This is a quote by James Lowell. And so here and welcome, Elizabeth. It was wonderful that you, you were able to join us. So here's this beauty about in approach, hexagram 19 approach. Earth above joy offers an opportunity where one is favored by circumstances and superiors to advance or receive a promotion, an offering, an up-leveling. Joy rises to permeate the earth. We're talking about enthusiasm, joy, the divine feminine energy that will permeate, embody, let it flow through, it'll guide us. 
The hidden influence of return allows you to connect to your center where you can express your talents while at the same time demonstrating your integrity. This is what it's all about. It's being authentic. It's being, it's leading with your soul and your soul doesn't lie. Your soul has the highest form of integrity. The mind, yes, it will beg, barter, steal, lie, all that good stuff. But the soul, never. Now is the time to show others that you have a sincere desire to advance. So remember, the antagonist, when they present themselves, this is your, oppor this is your opportunity to show others that you have a sincere desire to advance. Approach is a message about making or seeking contact. Soul source, divine self, authentic true self, not the masks, not the labels, not all that ego mind stuff. The underlying cause for this hexagram is that a period of retreat should now lead to advance. Trains come into the station, the sun comes into its stillness, we disembark. It dies, we get on the new train, we cross the platform, we get on the new train, and we're reborn. It rebuilds, it renews. Um, so, and it's to remember that life moves in cycles. In this way, we go inward and outward in fixed rhythms. The moment is ripe and won't last forever, so seize the opportunity to make your approach. So this is what we're talking about. This is about, you know, don't be late to the party. Make your approach. Make this transition. Make this commitment to yourself that I am advancing. I am leveling up. I am going to um, claim, I'm going to claim my auspicious nature, my auspicious energies, my utopia, this state of being that is divinely, uniquely me. And operate from that place because 2023, it's, it's an up-leveling. It is what's on offer. We just have to claim it. So put in the comments, I claim it. Um, I claim this. I claim this up-leveling. Now is the time to reach out to, uh, to others or expect that they will enjoy hearing your ideas. Because again, it's enthusiasm, it's contagious. So be open to sharing and at the same time, be conscious not to um, impede or, um, they're giving it to me, I'm going to say it the way, you know, be mindful to not vomit on others. <laughs> Everyone's going to be in their own, um, they're going to be at their own stage of, of embarking, disembarking and embarking. So be mindful of that. Even in small ways, you will discover that if you open yourself to helping others, you will discover untapped potential. Go for it and enjoy this time of approach. And it's such an auspicious, you know, we celebrate this time. We celebrate Christmas. We celebrate this renewal of the sun. And it's, it is this time of approach. Um, and so I wanted to bring in, because again, this was something, let me just, let's see, I got to find it. I'm sorry. I'm, uh, oh, there we go. Um, it is about, remember, when we suspend the reality we are in or believe we are in, a new reality emerges. There is definitely a new reality emerging. We are leveling up. We are transitioning. It is a moment of truth and reflection. And what was interesting because what this, um, what they said to me, the third thing that they said to me was, and it was, they said, where no man has gone before. And I immediately remembered, I'm like, wait a minute, that's a phrase or a catch line. And of course, it's the, from the 1960s Star Trek Enterprise. It's where no man has gone before. So what they're saying to us is, remember this utopia, this golden age, this Aquarian age. We haven't been there. Humans, certainly us that are incarnate at this moment, have not gone here before. We haven't been in this state of, of the Aquarian age. 
So it's a Star Trek Enterprise phrase of where no man has gone before. This leveling up, this Paradise Falls utopia. It may, and, and it's, it starts from the inside out. It's a belief, it's a knowing, it's a truth that manifests. And thereby, all of a sudden, you're like, oh, well, hang on a second. My whole world is different because I'm different because I leveled up. And last but not least was the beautiful, it's it's from a song, um, it, I believe originally the Mamas and Papas um, recorded it, but they said, and it's number four, it's foundational, and they said, dream a little dream of me. And so you can see how utopia, an imagined place or state of things in which everything is perfect. Star Trek Enterprise, where no man has gone before. Transitioning, leveling up, a moment of truth, of reflection. Dream a little dream of me. What they're saying is, you know, it's a field of dreams. Build it and they will come. Dream a little dream of me. Dream it. Believe it. Be it. Embody it. Because we're in the month of Advent. We're in the month where the old dies and the new is reborn. We're in this these two energies of standstill and approach. Transition. And thereby the new Adventus, Perugia this coming arrival, the new, arrives. Um, and it's auspicious. It's really quite, uh, it's really quite a joy. Um, so let me know how that's resonating with you. That is the, these are the current energies um, for the month of December and for this kind of culmination point. Um, because 12 is also, you know, it's the cycle, it's the calendar, it's the cycle. This Gemini full moon um, today. Um, and so they're, they're also saying about this Gemini full moon, be mindful of, they're saying be mindful of the better halves of you, the better aspects, the better parts of you. Because this can trigger. Gemini is about communication. It's ruled by Mercury. It's how we communicate. It's how we think, what are our thoughts. And they're talking about, you know, two halves. We've got two energies. We've got two halves, twins in Gemini, shadow and light aspects. Be mindful of the of the of the greater aspects of yourselves during this full moon and everything and how because it's a release right it's a culmination and it's a release the new moon um is i believe on the 23rd of december coming up um right before so it's right in this isn't that interesting it's right in this uh time period this uh, the uh death of the of the old sun where it's literally a standstill it, the sun does not go further south. It, it holds in a position for three days. And then it advances again north, true north. Highest, uh, highest octave. Um, Elizabeth is saying, someone told me yesterday, every problem already has its own solution. I really liked the idea. Yes. And I always say, you know, people used to come to me and say, I have a problem. And I said, no, we don't have a problem. We have an opportunity. So replace the word problem, challenge, and so forth with opportunity. Because as Elizabeth just commented, every problem already has its solution. It's an opportunity. It's an opportunity for a solution, for a way to, through, um, to move beyond, quote unquote, an obstacle, a challenge, a, an antagonist. It's an opportunity. Um, Anna sharing. That's exciting. Thanks. Thank you all so much. It's really quite, um, it really is quite an auspicious moment. Um, and as we move through, it'll be very interesting to see um, next week because the 14, it's a doubling of the seven. It's a 14, which becomes a five. Um, and five is about change. And we're talking about leveling up. So 
continue on, be really gentle with yourselves this last month of the year, and certainly during this transitioning, leveling up period, um, and be incredibly authentic, pure, authentic, good with yourselves and with others. Um, because we are going where no man has gone before, <laughs> and the way to, the way through is dream a little dream of me. It's, it's, um, it's source. That is, that is the unseen speaking. That is spirit, source, and symphony asking us to dream a little dream of them. They're the ones guiding us. They are the ones holding us, um, in their care. And, uh, it's a beautiful acknowledgement that they are present. They're ever present. They're, they're always with us and guiding us, and this is where we're going. So I am going to leave you with this beautiful image of the movie Up, because it's just, it, it says it all. And look, the home. You know, home is where the heart is. Home is our interior. It can be our literal physical structure, but that literal, literal physical structure for our soul is our body, and thereby it is being lifted up. Our home, our vessel, is being lifted up. And look at the color of those, all of those balloons to make a, a massive balloon. And this beauty of exceeding the big tent, the, the carousel, the dreamlike state, the fantasy and the fairy tale, the utopia of it. And that's what's on offer. That's That's the train we're all getting on. And I cannot wait to see where it leads us. So thank you all so much. Um, thank you for your patience these last two weeks. Cannot wait to see where this is all going. And I look forward to being with you all on this new season, season two of Weekly Wisdom and Insights. Thank you all so much. We'll see you next week. You've been listening to Dear James Live. Gain intuitive insight, answers, and advice to your life questions and so much more by tuning in next week and visiting DearJames.com.